welcome everybody. Uh, I trust we have had uh, a great week and a great month. I think in the month of September, we felt that God was saying that this is a, a powerful month for uh, supernatural synchronicities where God was going to meet us, that we were going to press in and we have begun to hear some quite some incredible testimonies. And I believe that it's not the month, it's not exactly just the month of September. I believe that is continuing. Uh, in our own family, we had uh, a situation which sprang up on us. I think the about the last week of uh, September, we uh, mom said, look, I'm not feeling well. And she came in for uh, to see the doctor and they diagnosed some uh, colon cancer. And they were saying, look, at your age, she's now about 77. And they said, at this age, you... Uh, things are very dicey and all kinds of things. So after doing a lot of tests, they um, they, they they then said, yeah, they, this is, uh, we thank God that at your age, unusually, this colon cancer is not spread. And it's, uh, although it's a malignant one, it's, uh, it has to go through an op. And initially we were kind of concerned saying, a seven, seven year old, diabetic, hypertensive, going through, a, a massive op and so on. But we believed God as a family. We prayed, we gathered together, we, we, we prayed as a family and we, we pressed in into God. And um, the, the op was done on, uh, on Wednesday. So it's about uh, three days ago, uh, almost a six hour op. She, she went through very well. The doctors are saying that uh, they believe that they completely removed the, the, the offending tumor and uh, she's healthy. Of course, she's still in a high dependence unit, but we, we saw God. And in the process, we, we, we saw what God is doing. We saw the promises of God. We saw God come through. But and interestingly, we, we have had a number of other testimonies that are very incredible, but we will not try to preempt and tell people's testimonies. But the point is that God is meeting his people. And when he meets his people, he does some things that kind of surprise you. For example, one of the things that kind of surprised us is uh, the, the, the doctor said to, to me at some point, he says, oh, you know what? Uh, actually, it was his office. He said, oh, we just uh, we are going to discount on, on your mom because uh, the doctor has just said, since it's your mom and you are my friend, so she's family, so she qualifies for a family discount. So we, we had um, God meeting us at that point and surprisingly, I mean, this was a significant amount. I think he knocked off almost 700 US dollars off the bill. And then we, we are thanking God, we are excited. When we are about to pay, I think a day ago, when we were about to pay a set, uh, the balance of the doctor's fees, the, the doctor's office says, wait, wait, don't pay. Uh, just wait a moment and uh, there's something that is happening. We'll get back to you. They got back to us end of day and they said, oh, we, we realized that, uh, although they knew, of course, they said, we realize that you qualify for another discount. You, you qualify for a pastoral discount. So both the doctors, there are two surgeons and an anesthetist. All the three doctors uh, granted uh, another discount. And I think it was close to 1,600 US dollars. So this is God just moving in and doing things. And I believe that God is, so he surprised us, number one, to say you have an early diagnosis before the cancer is spread. And we, we, we see God move in to do a six hour a major a cancer op on a 77 year old. And she's strong, she's, she's smiling. I've talked to you a number of times and it's amazing what God is doing. And I believe that God is still doing things. The, if you have not yet entered into your own breakthrough, don't say because September is over, therefore it's over. It's not over until it's over. It's time to get into the kind of prayer that I want to teach on, which is the prayer of praise. Rather, I don't know whether you can call it a prayer of praise, but praising God. You see, we, we should learn to praise God. And we have been taught particularly by Pastor Bonnie that, you know, we, we praise God when we feel like it. We praise it when we praise him, when we don't feel like it. There, there are two times to praise God and we need to keep praising God. So when we praise God, and I'm going to go into around familiar territory, but I'm going to put a spin, a little bit of spin, add a little bit of depth to the, the normal teaching we know about praise. So number one, I want you to know that the Bible says what, what we understand about praise is that praise is acknowledging what God has done. 
what God is doing and what God will do. So when I tell a testimony of what God has done, when I say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done, I've seen this miracle, it's one step after the other. I am praising God. I'm telling of his works. I'm telling of his deeds. I'm focused on the greatness of his deeds. So that is what praise is. So praise focuses on the greatness of his deeds, while worship focuses on the greatness of who he is. So worship focuses on who he is. Praise focuses on his deeds, the works of God. Praise expresses is thankfulness and appreciation for what God has done. It recognizes God's great power and mighty acts. Praise focuses on God's great deeds and appreciates the wonders of his works. While worship, like we said, focuses on God's greatness, it appreciates who he is. So when you really look at it, praise is an expression of faith. It's a declaration of victory. You can declare the victory before it has happened, or you can declare after it has happened. So when you declare before the, you see the manifestation, it's an expression of faith. It declares that we believe God is with us. We believe God is in control of the outcome of all our circumstances. So even when we go through tough times, I can praise God, knowing that God is in control of my circumstances, knowing that God will not, to borrow the words of my friend, God will not mismanage my life. So praising God is an acknowledgement and of an appreciation of what he has done for us and what I believe he is doing. It is our way of giving thanks to him because our God is worthy of our praise. You see, praise can be looked at as a, as a joyful recounting of all that God has done for us. It is closely intertwined with thanksgiving as we offer back to God appreciation for his mighty works on our behalf. You see, praise is a truthful acknowledgement of God's righteous acts. So when we praise him, we are, it's a form of saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I see what you have done. I appreciate your mighty end. I appreciate the greatness of what you do for me and what you are doing in my life. Or I can praise him in advance for things that I expect him to do, that I'm believing him for. So praise should be a part of a believer's lifestyle. It is intermingled as a part of their daily prayer life. You see, Psalms 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, at good times and in bad times. When I see the light and I don't see the light, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So praise is a lifestyle. Praise is a way of saying, I thank God. Even when I when I have prayed, when I have believed God, God, when I have stayed in faith, I enter into a season of praise. When as I praise, I begin to release the power of God. The high praises of God are powerful in our lives. So with that as an introduction, I want to go through the familiar territory of the seven Hebrew words which, which are used for praise in the Bible. But I want you to really look at how I define them, how I, 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 I put a spin on some of them too, so that we have depth in terms of what we praise. So the first one is halal. Halal means to celebrate, to boast and to glorify, to rejoice and boisterously praise God. It is to rave, rave in what God is. It is to be clamorously foolish. It is to boast and to celebrate God. It's emphasizing your boasting in God, even to the extent of looking foolish when you are in a great congregation. You see, one lexicon defines allow this way. It says to be clear, to be brilliant, to, to the brightness of light, to make a show, to be foolish. Now think about it, if we can look at it and you say, imagine a gathering that makes it clear who we worship. We worship God. We are shining the spotlight on our God in such a way that we seem foolish while we are doing it. So your praise when you are halal, you are shining the spotlight on God. You are clear you, who you are worshiping. Whether they, it's in all times you are worshiping God, you are praising him, you are giving glory, you are shining the spotlight. You are saying great is our God, might is our God. His right hand doeth mightly, doeth valiantly. Even if people look at you and say, how can you praise God when you don't see anything? It may seem foolish, but that's halal. Halal boasts in God even before he does anything. Or when he does something, you are so excited. You are like a David who is rushing and jumping and all over the place until Michael says, you know, you are embarrassing yourself because when you halal God, you are boasting in what he has done. You are boasting in what you know that he can do. So that's halal. We admire our God for who he is. In our, in our worship services. You see, we shine the light on him in our personal lives. Are we willing to be emboldened enough in our public worship to make a show that displays our foolishness as we praise God? You see, praising God publicly is without inhibition. There's no shyness when you are in halal. You see, the word halal is not shy. You see, with halal, praise is a sin. It's not, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, to praise God in the secret. You know, it's a public bombastic, uh, uh, 
robust, boisterous praise. It's worshiping God in a way that is evident, that is seen, that is allowed. Can you imagine a more wondrous noise loving about all that the Lord is and all that he has done? That is praising God. So you can allow God when he has come through. You can allow God as a statement of faith. Say, I believe God is coming through. I believe God is meeting my every need. I believe God is healing me. And I begin to praise him. You see, the devil wants us to focus on the need, but we need to focus on the solution. When you become solution focused, you begin to praise God. You begin to allow him. You begin to worship him. You begin to raise his name, his name high. You see, let me just give you a few verses that talk about halal. So Psalms 44 verse 8, it says, in God we make our boast all day long. That's halal. We make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Even though I don't see light at the end of the tunnel, I, I rave on God. I know my God. God knows something I don't know. He sees something that I don't see. If he allowed, if this thing happened and God was watching and he watches over my life, I can boast in him because I know he will come through. Psalms 48, this one, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Psalm 69, 34, let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves, let them praise him. Psalm 119, 175, let my soul live that it may praise you, that it may halal you and let your ordinances help me. So that's halal. It's a praise that is seen. It's a praise that is evident. It's a praise that is boisterous. It's a praise that is almost foolish. That's how we praise God. You see, when I think about what God has done for us and for our family, I mean, I can't, I, 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 I feel like I need to dance around because it is God. It is God who can do that. So that is halal. Hallelujah. The, the second Hebrew word is tehila. You see, to tehila is to praise vocally, to praise in song, to praise in shout, to sing praises. In another sense, it's singing out in the spirit spontaneously. So tehila can be singing spiritual songs. You see, it is unrehearsed and planned praises to the Lord. It implies a song sung in the spirit, which could be a new song or one that is spontaneously sung, as, or it can be a song in tongues. You see, simply tehila means a song song or a hymn of praise. Specifically, it is describing us singing and vocalizing our praise. We said halal, you know, halal praise is seen, but in Tehila praise is a head. It's a loud bombast noise. It's, it's we're praising God. You are vocalizing your praise. You are declaring who he is. You see, praise is not only head, but the idea is that we are louder for our God than we would be for ourselves. Our song declares the majesty of the one we love and we worship. You see, when we come into our worship spaces, do we gather with a song that honors our God? Because remember, Tehillah is more ahead than seen. So when we are Tehillah in God, we are singing and we are making noise to God. And it's a song of praise that we raise to our God in a worship. Then Psalms 22 verse 3 says, you are enthroned on the Tehillah of Israel. Go and you begin to praise God aloud with the singing. And you, as you do that, as you praise Jehovah, over, you are raising an altar for him. It reminds me of, of an experience we had just, a, I think it was just two days ago. We had some friends who got a miracle and they invited us to just dedicate the property that God had, ble had, had blessed them with. And as we were praying, we, I was about, we were about to dedicate it. And they said, look, we need to pull down the altars of the enemy and begin to raise the altar of Jehovah. As we began to pray, I just felt a spirit of Tehillah fall upon me. So I began to enthrone the Lord with our prayer. We began to invite Jehovah into that place. So we dedicated that property with the praise, with the Tehillah praise. So as we enthroned the Lord, we were dispossessing the enemy. So with our praise, we can dispossess the enemy. You know, the Bible says when God raised the children of Israel and he sent them to the land of Canaan, he said these people are raising a sacrifice of a sacrifice that is an abomination to me. They are worshiping idols. It's a stench in my, in my nostrils. But I want you to go and begin to heal me. I want you to enthrone me on your praises. So when Israel entered into the land, their assignment from God was to enthrone Jehovah on their praises. So when we heal God, we are really enthroning God and we are dispossessing demonic spirits. So Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 40 verse 1 to 3, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slime
slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. You set my feet on a rock. You gave me a firm place to stand. You put a new song, Tehila, in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. When we begin to Tehila God, we are enthroning him. We are declaring that Jehovah is God. We are allowing God to be God. You know, so Psalm 51, verse 55, Psalm 51 says, Oh Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. That's Tehillah praise. So with the Tehillah, his praise is ahead. Hallelujah. So that's what we mean by praising God. So number three, it's a Zama. We know Zama means to praise him on the string instruments, to make music accompanied by voice, to celebrate in song and the music to God. You see, instrumental music all and on, it, on its own can itself be praised. You see, singing and vocalizing our praise with the added sounds and rhythms makes our praise even greater. You know, in my view, there is nothing sweeter than skillfully played music in honor of our God. I'm often surprised by people who try to lead praise and worship without practicing without sharpening their skills. They want to try to be spontaneous all the time. It is shocking that there are people who want to be on stage leading worship, but they do not want to pay the price of training and practice. But Zama is a skilled worship. It's skilled praise. It's doing it with instrument. Zama is inspired, synchronized, orderly singing, adding precision to worship. We can sing the same melody better with the accompaniment of an instrument or group of instruments. Does not our gathering deserve prepared music? to guide our singing of praise. You see, religious worship is this place. But isn't there something special about the feast that is prepared, that is choreographed? So all are involved to participate. So when we talk about Zama, we are talking about precision, synchronized rhythmic harmony in honor of our God. That's why Psalms 21, 13 says, Be exalted, O Lord my God. In your strength we will sing and we will Zama your power. We will praise your power. Psalm 33, verse 2, says, give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Sing praises to him with the harp of ten strings. That is Zama. Psalm 68, 32. Sing to God, all kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks. It is good to Zama, the Lord, to sing praises you know, on the instruments, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Psalm 108, verse 1. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing, I will sing praises even with my soul. So Zama is to praise God is with the instrument. Psalm 147 verses 1 and 7 says, it is good to sing praises to our God. Sing praises upon the harp to our God. So there is a place of precision worship, of prepared worship, of skilled worship, praises. When we praise God with the skill, with the, with the harp, with the symbols, with the loud clinging symbols, Psalm 150 says, you see, let everything that is breath praise the Lord. That's how we praise our God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. So we talked about we talked about how to zama God. We talked about how to allow God. We talked about how to to praise God in Tehila praise. So we, we we these are ways that we praise God that we take. We continue to lift his name high as we praise him. And we, as the people of God, we have seen the power of God. We, 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 have, we have a way of praising him, of lifting up his name, of letting him know that we appreciate his goodness. So number four is yada. Yada is a gesture of throwing out one's arms vigorously in celebration, praise and complete surrender. So yada is a sense of saying, Lord, I praise you. I surrender to you. You see, yada is a picture of arms extended that not only says I surrender to you, but it also declares, Lord, I need you. So we can reach out in his direction longing for freedom, longing for deliverance, longing for healing. We can acknowledge the nature and the work of God with extended hands to wave our hands in praise. We are stressing and the recognition and the declaration of the fact of God's work and the nature using praise to express thanks to him. So we thank him. I'm saying, Lord, I need you. Where I am right Right now, I am broken as I praise you, as I worship, as I give you praise, as I yard you. I'm saying I lift up my hands to you as the maid lifts up her eyes to the to a master. So I lift up my eyes to you as a servant lifts up her, her head to a mistress. So do we lift up our eyes to the Lord? So it's a yard. I'm saying, Lord, I'm depending on you. So when you do yard praise, you're entering into a place where you're saying, Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm depending on you. Lord, I'm surrendering to you. So 
soon as you do that, God comes through because God responds to those who are yielded to him. Psalm 42 verse 5 says, why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. I shall again yard him for the help of his presence. What an encouragement to know that the presence of God is the help for us. In our human frailty, we find that our need of God and the confession of that need is paramount. So we praise God. In Psalm 89 verse 5, the heavens will yard you, will praise your wonders. Oh Lord, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5, yard the Lord, oh my soul, all my innermost being, yard his holy name, yard the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who gives, who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desire with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So when you yard a God like that, you don't always have to come to God and say, Lord, I need this, I need this. You can turn and you praise him in advance. You thank him for his benefits. You thank him for the cross. You thank him for the healing. You thank him for the forgiveness of sins. You thank him for redemption from poverty. And you thank him for crowning your life with compassion. Even before you see it, he satisfies you with good, your mouth with good things. And your youth is renewed like eagles. You can praise God. You can yard a God. That is how we praise God. Hallelujah. Number five is Tauda. Tauda means to sing praises together as one community in thanksgiving to God. For what he has done, we'll do, and you do it in harmony. It's an extending and a raising of hands in corporate thanksgiving for something that has been done or will be done. You see, Tauda speaks of congregational worship. It's communal sacrifice from God's people. We glorify God within our community of faith. When we sing together God's praises in harmony and unity, it is lifting up of hands in processional sacrifice of praise, thanking God. We it may include processions it may include banners. You are saying as a congregation, we, we worship God. And this is a sacrifice of praise. This is the kind of worship which you deliberately lift up your hands regardless of outside circumstances. It refers to praise through tough times. You remember Paul and Silas praising God in the midnight hour. That is Tauda. You are praising God aloud. And you remember Jonah in the belly of the fish. That is Tauda. You are saying, Lord, even if the circumstances are bad, I will praise you. Yet will I praise you. Yet will I praise you. I'm not praising you for the bad things. I'm not praising you for the time, tough times, but I'm praising you because I know you will see me through. Even like Job says, even though everything around me collapses, yet I will still praise you. That is Tauda praise. Hebrews 13, 15 says, through, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that confess his name. A sacrifice sometimes is painful. This allows us to give God praise. You know, together in a congregation, we are gathered together and we Tauda God. We praise God together. You know, there are some people who say, oh, I can praise God a lot. Yes, there's a place for that, but there's a place where you need congregational worship, where you need to gather with the saints and you tout God together. You praise him in the, in, the, in the rain. You praise him in the fire. You praise him when things are tough. That is Tauda. Psalms 42 verse 2 says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God and with the voice of joy and the Tauda, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Psalm 56 12, vows made to you abiding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. Jeremiah 33 11, the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of bride, the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of those who say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercies endureth forever. And of those who bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause the captives of the land to return as the, as the first, says the Lord. That is Tauda praise. So we praise God in these five ways. And number six, we shall back God. Shabbat means to shout forth praise. To praise God with a loud voice. To shout is a shout of triumph to God. 
And it's a shout that quietens or steals or calms something. You see, it is Shabak praise that, that, that silences the enemy. You see, the word, Shab, the word Shabak comes from the word Saba, which is like a stroke of a swimmer, or is it something that soothes and steals? So Saba may also be the experience we feel as the stormy waters steal during our lifting up of our praise to God. It is the praise that steals the storm. It is the praise, the Shabak that calms the waves. It is the Shabak that causes the wars to cease from you. It is the you, Father, you know, when, when you know you have, you, you have internal wars, when they are struggling and you find wars, you have doubts, you have pain, when you begin to shut back God, the, that is a praise that steals the storm, that calms the waves, that causes the wars to cease. Whether we sing in private or we pray aloud, out aloud in church, we are sure to discover that there's a praise that often calms the storm within us and around us, even, even, even for those moments, because it is the shout of the Lord. When you raise the shout of the Lord, it becomes a powerful weapon that silences and steals the enemy. You see, praise is a choice that we must intentionally commit to in our daily lives, but equally so in our corporate gatherings. Do we believe that God loves us and is our best interest at heart? If, if we do, then we should shabak him, because when we shabak him, the waves that emanate from within and from without, they are silenced. When the storms hit, we need the stealing stroke of God's hand in our lives, and it only comes when when we begin to shabak God, when we neglect to thank God with our sacrifice of praise, we are likely to be overwhelmed by life. How do you praise? How do your praises still the storm in your life? It is when you shabak God. Hallelujah. Psalm 63, verse 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you, shall shabak you. Psalm 47, verse 1. Come, everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with joyful praise. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall praise, shall shabak your works to another, and shall declare your mighty works. Psalm 147, verse 12. Shabak the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord your God, O Zion. So when you shabak God, when you clap your hands and you declare who God God is, it silences the storm. You see, there's a place where we need to shabak the Lord. And the last Hebrew word for praise is barak. It means to bow, to kneel before the Lord in reference. It communicates that the Lord holds a place of importance and it helps us remember just how great he is. Barak is not done out of a begging attitude. It's not like I'm begging, I am pleading, but rather it is an expectant attitude. It's bowing in reverence. When I praise God, because I am expected, when I praise God, because I'm in faith, because I know that the Lord is more than willing and more than able to move on my behalf, that's when I barak him. Psalm 95, 6 to 7 says, come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Psalm 72, 12 to 15, you will rescue the poor when they cry to him. You will help the oppressed. We have no one to defend them. Long live the king. May the gold of Sheba be given to him. May the people always pray for the Lord. Bless him all day long. So we declare that Jehovah, when we barack him, when we bow before him, when we come before him, we he, the Lord will rise up and the mighty one will fight our battles. So we can use praise as a powerful weapon. And these seven ways are ways that can help us to get to a place where God gives us the victory. It takes us to a place where we are more effective when we use praise as a powerful prayer tool. So that is what we can do when we praise God. So we praise him for what he has done. We praise him for what he is doing. We praise him in anticipation. When we begin to use these seven ways and we say, Lord, we will praise you. We declare who you are. We declare your greatness. We declare the greatness of your power. We, 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 we know that you are able. When we do that, we see the hand of Jehovah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, this is what I want us to do. I want us to take just some five minutes to praise God. You will find yourself fit in any one of those seven. Whether you choose to Tauda, whether you choose to Barak, whether you choose, you have, I don't know many of us will be able to, 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 to Zama. I don't know how many they have instruments here, but there, there are ways you may bow before him. You may be praying and praising him in anticipation. You may be praising him for what he has already done, but the, it is good to give praise to God. Let his praises be continually in my mouth. So let's just take some time. Let's unmute our minds and let's just get into a season of praising our God. He is great. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy.
worthy. He deserves the praise. Come on, let's just join as we declare the greatness of our God. Father, I thank you. I worship you, my oh, God. Oh, yes, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift our oh, hands. Lord. And yes. in congregational worship. In the name of worship, Jesus, we offer I come, you oh, Lord, the sacrifice you, of praise. Father, we say you are Jesus. great. You oh, are mighty. Lord, I thank you, you are worthy in the name to be of worshipped. Jesus. Father, I boast all day, We praise you for your great power. We praise you for your great glory. Father, we barack you. We praise you for you. We reverence you, O Lord our God, because you are Jehovah. You alone are God. We give you praise because you are Jehovah. Father, we shall back you. Father, as we shall back you, as we shout the shout of praise, as stealing the storms, you are calming the waves. You are causing the waves to cease. You are causing the waves to stop. Father, we declare that the storms will cease in the bodies of your people. Storms will cease in the lives of your people. As we back you, as we shall back you, as we shall back you, we the shout of triumph, I declare the end for the victory. For the we are seeing the hand of God, we are seeing the goodness of God. The Lord of God, we praise you, we we honor you, my God. I thank you. We lift your name up, my God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We give communal praise. Praise to you. We give communal praise. Glory to God. Father, we praise you. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for what you have done. We give you thanks for deliverance. We give you healing. We give you victory. We give you thanks for sustaining us. We tell that you are God. We lift up our hands. We praise you. We lift your name on high. We declare, my God, you are Lord and worthy to be praised. We praise you, all of God. Father, we praise you. And I say, bless the Lord. Oh my soul, all my innermost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord of my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems you away from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion. You know I bless you, Lord, because you satisfy my desires with good things. My youth is in you, like an eagle. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I worship you, my God. I declare that I need you. I yard at you, my God. I shall not to you, Lord. I yell at you, Jehovah, as I throw up my hand. I surrender. I celebrate you, Lord. I surrender to you, Lord. I give you praise. I honor you, I worship you. I honor you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you praise. I praise, oh Lord. I worship the King of God. We give you praise, Ancient of Days. Father, we say, heal are you. And throw up you on our praise. Father, we say, heal are you, my God. Father, we shout the sound of praise. Our Father, we vocalize our praise. Father, our praise is heard. We the day our praise is heard. Father, we declare you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. Of our praise. Oh, we the ancient of days. We declare your praise. We declare your praise. We declare your praise. We declare your praise. Father, we sing to you in the spirit. In the heal our praise. Father, we sing a song of praise. We worship and we honor you. Oh, our God, our Father, God. Father, we thank you. We are allowed you unashamedly, without shame, without shyness, without any vision. Praise you, Lord. Declare who you are. Oh, Father, we, we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your goodness. We boast in who you are. We glorify you, Lord. We rejoice in the God. And our God, we are will be clamorously foolish. We boast and we celebrate our God. We thank you, Lord, our God. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless your name, King of Kings. You deserve the praise. You deserve our worship. You deserve the praise, Lord. We give you Jehila praise. We give you Halal praise. We glorify your name, Lord. We glorify your ancient of days. We thank you, my Father. We honor your name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God.
You see, when we learn to, to praise God like this, mm -hmm. it changes mm -hmm. the atmosphere. It mm -hmm. turns the battle. It turns the tide in the battle. Mm -hmm. yeah, I so I, I hope that you receive some insights here. Though it's familiar mm -hmm. territory, I believe you receive some insights that you'll find helpful. So I thank you. God bless you. And I hand back to Deacon Moore.